Today I'm going to take a look at this mobile access NMS controller unit. From what I can tell, this is a management device for these network nodes that either um, handle things like Wi-Fi or two-way radio communication, like basically all sorts of RF stuff. The idea is that they're like either repeaters or boosters or part of a big infrastructure network. And this thing seems to be some kind of management system. And uh, I, th I think it's just got like a proprietary uh, connection between uh, multiple controllers. And then it's got uh, RS-485 connections to, I don't know, maybe individual nodes or what. But uh, it just seems to do light management. I mean, it's not um, a particularly powerful piece of hardware. It's just kind of some simple microcontrollers and stuff in here. We've got a bunch of indicators and uh, an LCD. The LCD just shows some kind of boot sequence stuff and never really does anything. On the front, there's an RS-232 port and it's actually a removable module. <laughs> I was thinking this was like some kind of upgrade card, like um, a plug-in option of some type. It turns out it's literally just a wire that connects to a much larger uh, DB connector at the back. So this is clearly designed for other upgrades. I mean, you can see there's even spot um, screw mountings for a PCB, but I guess it's uh, just putting out RS-232 anyway. So it just needs a passive wire connector. Around back, we can see all the serial connections. We've got all these RS-232 ports bunch of RS-485 ports. These are these bus connectors, which I assume connect to other management units. Uh, there's an internal modem connector, a power connector, which is just a little terminal block. I actually had some leads soldered onto this to power it since I couldn't get any probes in there easily. Uh, there's an alarm output port, which is actually an HD uh, DB15 connector, like a VGA port and uh, an external modem and auxiliary alarm. And again, this is an, uh, an HD connector. There's three rows of pins. The case itself is very beat up. I don't know what happened to this thing, but it's in pretty rough shape. And uh, well, I mean, I paid like $10 for it. So I'm mean, including shipping. So it's not the end of the world, but <laughs> I don't plan on using it. I just wanted to see what's inside it. On the inside, we can see that it's pretty sparse. I mean, <laughs> there's this huge section of area just with nothing. I mean, you'd think they could have put in more of these modules or something. And uh, yeah, it's just a couple ribbon cables running to the front LEDs and the, the LCD display. And there's a little separate connector for the backlight. And a very narrow motherboard in uh, relative to the length of a 1U uh, rack case at least. The LCD module is just a standard 16 by 2 LCD. Like I said, it has a separate connection for the uh, the backlight from Zyman Ocular. The front LED board is just a completely passive LED board. There's no electronics on it whatsoever other than the LEDs. Uh, these ribbon cables, in fact, all the ribbon cables on this thing are nicely hot glued in. All right. Looking at the main PCB, there's some RS-232 stuff over here and lots of input filtering. Uh, we've got this nice little uh, inductor choke, uh, inductor cap combo, I should say. Uh, input caps, some ferrite beads. Uh, this module, which is like a uh, separate, completely separate module, is a, um, a modem. I'm gonna have to take that off and uh, take a better look at it. And we've got an Atmel chip over here. We'll get a better look at that in a bit. What looks like some solid state relays. And missing a couple caps there. I guess they don't need them. And some power supply stuff. This is a uh, five volt, two amp output DC to DC converter. Uh, a couple jumpers and a pot. This is right next to the connector for the um, the LCD, so this is going to be contrast. These either will set settings on the board, or maybe even define what kind of uh, what kind of LCD you're using. In case they have other options, there's backup battery. Uh, there's only three electrolytic capacitors on this 
entire board, which uh, probably makes this thing pretty reliable. They have no fan in here, no separate power supply or anything. So, I mean, other than the DC to DC. Uh, these are, in fact, um, electrolytics, not polymer caps. You can tell because they have a little, the little vent groove cut into them. And uh, another Atmel chip. And that might be a Zillog RS422, or sorry, 485 controller. Uh, these are probably all like the transceivers for it because uh, this is the big bank of 485 connectors. <laughs> The two Atmel chips seem to be plain old AT89C51s, which are just standard um, 80251 compatible microcontrollers. There's another one down here, uh, presumably handling all the other ports. This one's probably doing all the, uh, the work for the RS-232 ports. There's a MAX-232 for the, um, the external modem port. These two chips, which are paired with the uh, microcontrollers, are just dual UARTs, so nothing, nothing uh, out of the ordinary there. There's what looks to be a little bit of Cypress SRAM on each of these uh, little modules. They're, they seem to have cloned these two sections and just replaced the 485 receivers with 232 receivers on the other side. There doesn't seem to be any central processor, so uh, it's either just the microcontrollers handle everything, or uh, this is actually designed to connect to something larger that would actually interface with your system. I can't find a proper data sheet on this modem, but I can uh, tell you that it's a 336 data and fax modem. Ooh, uh, it is actually pretty cool. It's just a little potted module and it's an entire modem all in one. It handles all the uh, isolation and everything. It's a pretty neat module. I mean, useless, but neat. This little DC to DC converter seems quite nice. Uh, it can handle anywhere from 10 to 48 volts in and has, a, as I said, 5 volt 2 amp output. It's uh, pretty simple too. It's just two input pins and two output pins. And it looks like it just needs some capacitance on the outside and that's it. Completely isolated, uh, up to 82% efficiency. You know, not, not a bad uh, DC to DC converter. Uh, I did want to open it up. I was considering uh, opening it up for, you know, science. But uh, these things are, um, the, the steel that they're using is quite tough. And I'm afraid if I bent these little notches out, it'll just break this entire uh, plastic backing. It looks like it's, uh, it's pretty tough because I tried to pry it with a screwdriver and it didn't want to budge. So it might take a some drastic uh, destructive force to uh, open this thing up. So I think I'm just gonna leave it. It's a, pr a pretty decent uh, DC to DC converter made by P Duke. Looks like the OEM for this board is a uh, Foxcom wireless, which I've never heard of. Although <laughs> I like how the, uh, the W on the wireless has like a similar font to the Walgreens logo. I think that's about it for this thing. I mean, I didn't expect to find too much in this thing. I, w I wasn't sure initially if it had, if it was just like a microcontroller based device or if it was a proper PC, but I was leaning towards microcontroller and it turned out that's what it was.